So again, um, just lifted a nice picture of a bunny and um, consuming things. And this is going up those trophic levels now. So we're going from here, a producer to a primary consumer. And the principles of this would apply also to this transfer from primary to secondary consumer. The principles are the same. So here we're looking at what animals do with their food. And it doesn't matter whether you're talking about a caterpillar or a spider or, you know, um, or, or an elephant. It really doesn't matter. The principles are the same. So the idea is that the animal, at whatever stage of the trophic, uh, trophic food chain it is, whatever trophic level it's at, is consuming energy. So this is the food that it's eating, which has an energy level. Usually, again, we're looking at kilojoules per meter squared per year as production. You always you do it for a year because it takes into account any seasonal variation. So, when the animal takes in food, this is a slightly misleading diagram, it goes into the gut, it gets digested, and then some of it does not get digested and drops straight out of the animal's bottom as faeces, which we're going to call F. Of the food that is absorbed, it is then assimilated. That means it gets taken into cells and has stuff done with it. And once it's assimilated, there are again various things that can happen to it. So the food that we take in, some of it is used to fuel our own respiration, which we're going to label R. Some of it, the excess amino acids are converted into urea or other nitrogenous wastes and they're lost in urine. And then the rest of it can go to produce new bunny stuff, I suppose, new biomass. So again, we can work out the production of an animal if we know some of these numbers. So let's just have a look at that. So in this case, if we're trying to work out production of this rabbit. We need to take in food consumed. And then we need to take off all the things that it is used for. So, what is it used for? We're trying to get ascertain this. It's used for respiration and some of it's lost in faeces and some of it's lost in urine. Now I actually like to rearrange that so it says consumption minus fur. That makes so much sense to me and that's just really, really easy to remember. And of course, if you were given a calculation, then you would have to um, you'd have to give it units kilojoules per meter squared per year in this case. Now that will apply to obviously the secondary consumer. So um, I'm hesitant to use grass, rabbit, fox, but let's you know, hey, why not? So obviously the fox. takes in the production of the rabbit, that's its food consumed, and it also uses it for respiration and urine and faeces. And then you'll get another production level. Now the sort of efficiency of production we'll deal with in some calculations, but that's what you need to be thinking about as you're looking at this um, at this equation. And just a bit of a reminder, urine and faeces, they all go off to decomposers eventually. Might go through a detritive war or two first. And the respiration of course, that is lost as heat to the atmosphere. 
Um, so there's various things that can affect the, um, the productivity. If we're thinking about farm animals, for example, um, you might be looking at trying to cut down the respiratory losses of the animal by keeping it inside, uh, keeping it warm so that it's not using as much heat to keep of its own uh, resp respiration to keep warm. You might be trying to restrict its movement um, so that it doesn't use up as much of what it's consumed in, in jumping around. Very little you can do about the urinary and faeces losses. I suppose with faeces you could potentially feed them a more high protein diet and that would certainly cut down the losses which would mean that you get more production. Production of course is then what's available to the next level. If you're looking at rearing rabbits or sheep or cows the next level up is humans. Uh, so that's something to consider. And the other is the level of productivity between different food chains. So obviously uh, something that doesn't use a lot of its rest, you know, a lot of its food to respire just to provide heat. So anything in an aquatic food chain, um, all the invertebrates, um, so uh, reptiles, they're all, you know, a little bit more efficient and very often you'll see on television programs and talk about eating insects as being the sort of the protein source of the future. Um, not something I fancy doing but you know give them the choice. Uh, and, and insects of course are great because they're not using as much energy because they're not using any of their consumption, the energy that they've consumed to keep themselves warm. So you're really looking at sort of faeces and nitrogenous waste losses. Um, and everything else is theirs to produce. I, I've got to say I'm never going to eat a spider. Never. Not ever. And I don't much fancy witchetty grubs either. They look a bit repulsive. Still, they could always live on seafood. Okay.